forward. Again, sitting comfortably. Um, today we're going to do a little focus on the spleen and stomach channels. Kind of be our main focus for the day. But to begin with, we'll just sit comfortably with a long spine and start to go inside. So let your eyes be soft or closed, whatever you prefer. And we're going to imagine that we're breathing in and out our heart. So taking slow and even breaths. Imagine the breath coming in through the heart, into the heart, into the body, through the heart, and exhaling back out the heart. And allowing the mind to just relax on the breath. Comes another part in person. So imagining that we're breathing in and out through our heart as we let allow our body to just relax, our mind to rest on the breath. This will Increase the toroidal field around our heart, allowing for a greater coherence between our mind and our heart. Simply by imagining and feeling into the heart. We're slowing down our breath, slows down our body, mind, organism. This allowing a greater coherence with our body, mind, and heart naturally start to happen. And as we do this, we can also just bring attention to the heart by gently tapping, just using our fingers, gently tap around the heart as we continue to see the breath flowing in and out through the heart. And then we can take our hands up to our head and gently massage our scalp. Just kind of wake up our head a little bit. And our ears, massaging our ears. Just a little movement of the ears, pulling and pressing, squeezing. Bringing our fingers, one finger in each ear, just gently pull down and hold for a breath. We can activate the vagus nerve. And then releasing the arms out to our side, moving the spine by reaching forward and bringing our arms back and just waving the arms forward and back as we gently arch and round the spine. And breathe, continue to breathe. 
carefully and evenly. And just letting the arms come by our side, we'll bring our feet out in front of us and come into a long-legged butterfly. If you like to have something underneath your legs, feel free to grab a pillow or bolster if that feels good to you. And we'll come forward here and just relax our torso over the legs. Allowing the hips to just let go, the knees, and the legs. And if you want, you can also massage your feet while you're here, just gently squeezing and rubbing the feet, giving them a little bit of attention. Just starting to gently open up the hips and the sacrum. So remembering the three tattvas of yin, finding our edge, finding that, that point of a little bit of resistance. And the second one being still. The third one being a length of time of holding in stillness. You might explore a little bit. We're essentially in the pose that we're in for a length of time. And if you'd like to, you might bring your feet, if this feels comfortable to you, bring your feet a little closer toward the hips into more of a short-legged butterfly. That's comfortable if your body is okay with that. You want to listen to our body. This will Increase the stretch, bring it more into the inner legs, groin area. Add a little more compression into the knees, of course. So the spleen channel runs from the big toe up through the inside of the foot and across the inside ankle. It travels up the inside front of the leg. So kind of along the front of the leg, but towards the inside of the leg, kind of close to the stomach channel, which runs up the, directly up the front of the leg. And it kind of travels up the middle of the torso. The spleen channel travels up the middle toward the outside a little bit, toward the side body all the way up to the armpit. Branches and connects in with the heart and the stomach meridians as well. Clean is the yin, the yin uh, partner to the yin yang of the spleen and stomach, right? The stomach is the yang, 
Sahil. So let's go ahead and press ourselves up to sitting. Just come up slowly and gradually. Or you can just lift the knees. Maybe windshield wiper them. Go whatever feels good to you. And then we'll bring our right leg out front and then the left leg out to the side. We have a 90-90 angle here. Bring the right hand behind that leg. We're going to lengthen the spine and twist to the right. So just make sure we lengthen the spine first and just allowing our breath to twist our body. And coming back around to face our right leg. Just go ahead and bring your arms to the floor here, your elbows, and then sliding our left leg back. And always remember that you can do a different pose than what I'm doing or find a different variation anytime that feels right for you. Really want to listen to our body come into a pose. Start to feel what is the what is happening in the right hip and leg. If you'd like, you can move your foot closer in, but come more into a sleeping swan or you can keep it anywhere between that 90 degree angle and bring it in towards you. Eventually coming all the way down if that's comfortable and resting. You can also have a bolster in front of you if you want, right? For the arms, the forehead. or stay lifted. Just kind of finding our own version. <laughs> Just want to find our own version of the asana. Don't always remember all the possible modifications, but if we listen to our body, we might find our own modification. Time we are squeezing or twisting, stretching, compressing, we're doing it. So that is basically what we're looking for in a yin pose, right? Sensation. One or several of those sensations. Chinese medicine, the spleen is considered the primary organ of digestion. In Chinese medicine, they, they don't view the organs as um, things like we tend to look at organs in Western medicine, but 
they consider them to be functions that permeate, that, that have specific roles and they permeate the body-mind organism. So they're not just in one location. <laughs> and the, the spleen is our, can be considered the organ of adaptation. It is what allows us to adapt to our environment and get our needs met. Physiologically, it manifests or expresses itself as in terms of digestion and the digestion process, helping the chi to take the food and manifest itself throughout the body, changing the food into energy. Of course, we get physically, we get our nourishment in the form of food and breath. If you feel like you'd like to press your torso up, you can just use your hands and come up and add a little bit of a back bend if that feels good to you, or just continue to lie down on your leg either way. If it feels right. So in a sense, it's really not as, as important what we eat, but how strong and efficient our spleen is in extracting the nourishment from our food. have an attitude of, oh, I shouldn't be eating this because it's not good for me <gasps> or something, then the food is not going to, your spleen is not going to be able to get the most out of that food, whatever it is. We receive our food with gratitude and joy, then the spleen will be able to more efficiently and effectively nourish our body. You are up and you want to come back down on the leg for just a little bit longer. We can start to slowly press ourselves up from here. If you want to stay longer, feel free, always. And then slide that left leg up as you come up. And coming around, sitting, and do whatever movement feels good to your legs. Your body. Then we'll bring our left leg in front. 
right leg out side, kind of a 90 degree angle there. Let the hip relax. And then bringing our left hand behind us, lengthening the spine, and we'll just spiral back to the left. So letting the breath take us into a twist here. And we'll come around to face our leg and start to come forward onto the elbows. Slide that right leg back as much as it wants to go. To bring some pressure onto the left leg here. Of course, feel free to just the foot, bringing it closer in or not. Also climb all the way up onto the leg. Like any of those variations, depending on our knees and our hips, <laughs> what feels right for today. Good for us if we're able to, of course, to put that compression into the knee joint. It's very good for the knees, unless your knees don't allow it. Keeps them healthy if you are able to. Well, on the um, also on the physiological level, the spleen manifests and expresses itself uh, mentally um, in terms of our thought processes, our thinking apparatus. So there's a connection between our thoughts, our thinking processes and our digestion. So it allows us to, it's what allows us to adapt, to process information, take in and process it, and adapt on the mental level to our environment. too much in the in the mental level or there's a lot of mental activity there can be a craving for sweets something like that right the spleen will get a little bit over activated or if we eat more than more than enough, <laughs> then our mind can become sluggish. Right? So there's that connection between <clears throat> the mind and the digestive system. And we can see that um, in the expressions that sometimes we use like, um, I'd like to chew this over when you're 
reading something, you know, I'm gonna chew on this <laughs> or that's food for thought. Food for thought is a good example of the connection between the thinking and the digestive process. If you feel like you would like to press up and add a little bit of a back bend, feel free to just come up onto the hands or not. how we how we ingest whether it's food or mental things things for the mind how we ingest is <clears throat> just as important sometimes more important than what we ingest spleen doesn't like Be flooded. So if we're <clears throat> eating a meal, it's best not to be drinking any liquid at the same time or very little liquid. Best to drink liquids between meals instead of during. And the spleen doesn't like to be chilled. So if we eat too much cold food or raw food that will have an, can have an adverse effect on the spleen, weakening it. Also, the spleen doesn't like to mix work with eating. So if we're eating, it's been more beneficial not to be working at the same time or multitasking. <laughs> Best to just relax and enjoy the food. Also eating food that has a greater more life force and locally grown, organic, fresh, much better for the spleen, digestive system. Also trust Allowing your deeper, a deeper trust to happen in your body where sometimes things that you think are cravings, let's say I have this craving for whatever it is, maybe you really go deeper and listen. There's something behind the craving that relates to nourishment something underneath it. Okay, so we can start to press ourselves up slowly here. If you want to slide that right leg up, making sure we come out slowly and gently so the connective tissue can rebound. <laughs> and then we'll do whatever feels good to our legs. Shake them out. And let's go ahead and just straddle, take the 
little short time in dragonfly. So however wide the legs want to go and letting the arms come forward. You can have a pillow or a bolster here so that you can have support, relax the torso. Just coming onto the elbows. And then we'll go ahead and press up from there. And then as we come up, we can lean back, slide the legs in, <laughs> take them out, and we'll come on to our belly. And you want to have your, I forgot to mention, if you have a strap, have your strap handy. I don't know if I mentioned that before. So coming into banks, just allowing the pelvis to maybe rock side to side, relax here. Let's go back then after Forward folding is good for our sacrum, iliosacral joint, keeping the joint from getting fixated, stuck. Which can especially happen if you do a lot of sitting. We do a lot of sitting in, during the day. It's really hard on the sacrum over time. Then we'll take our strap, which you can use your hand if you're able to as well. But if you have a strap, that will allow more um, ability to not stress your arms holding on to your leg, right? So you can just hook it around one leg like that. But if you want to use your hand as well, you can just use your hand. And we'll press the pelvis into the ground and just 
gently pull the leg towards us, just giving it a little stretch. And this is, of course, the, getting the stretch across the top of the thigh where the stomach meridian travels. Well, is a nice stretch for the hip flexors, <laughs> muscles on the front of the leg, which if you do a lot of sitting can tighten up. <laughs> so, won't stay here long. We'll do this one for a little while and then we'll switch. But feel free to do what feels right for your body. You can even just lift both legs towards your hips. So helpful if the legs are fairly close together, get it more stretch through the front of the body. And then if you want to switch to the other leg, if you're doing one leg at a time, like I said, you don't have to. You can do both legs and just lift the feet. Her. Variations here. <laughs> but we do want to get an extra stretch in the front of the leg if we can. So pressing the front of our hips into the ground that foot towards us more, bringing that leg towards us. Of course, we're nourishing the kidneys and the kidney channel as well, and the kidneys relate to all of the functions in our body. <laughs> we have to keep the kidneys and the kidney channel healthy. By supporting our body with our arms, we are also engaging the small intestine and all of the upper body meridians, but the small intestine in particular, which relates to digestive processes.
want to release the leg and stay in Sphinx a little bit longer or come into seal for a little bit. Whatever feels right for your body. So increase that stretch and compression by coming into seal, straightening the arms, maybe widening them a little bit more apart. Any, of course, any of the variations that feels right. Just a little bit longer. You are in seal, go ahead and come down to Sphinx. And we're just going to do a short break in half frog on one side. So whatever side you want to choose, just slide that knee up, rest your head, and allow our spine to come back into balance and rest here. Our hip relax. To where you might really feel the breath, you know, circulating the energy after that back bending. I notice that a lot when it's coming to that frog. <laughs> okay, so we'll slide our leg down and bring ourselves up onto our knees if you're able to be on your knees. Or if you find another way, you can move your spine to the position. We're just gently going to curl the tailbone and let our spine round. You might like to bring the hips back and stretch back a bit and then come up and arch gently. Letting the spine move slowly and gently. And circling the hips and just kind of letting our body go wherever it wants to. Just allowing some circular movement. Spiraling movement. And go in the other direction. Both ways. One direction might feel a little bit awkward. And then we'll sit back into child's pose. Or if you're not able to do that, you can come or prefer to do another position. You can come onto your back, to a happy baby. And we can widen our knees apart if that's comfortable for you, back and out in front if that's comfortable for you.
the ultimate yin pose here. <laughs> so we compress the spleen, the stomach, the digestive organs in child's pose while we stretch the channels that run through the legs, right? The kidney, liver, spleen, stomach. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of there. So we'll bring ourselves into a, a down dog for a moment. Tucking the toes, lifting the hips, and stretching the heels down. And coming back down to the mat, to the ground, we'll bring our right foot forward and find a drag in here. Or if you need to be on your back, the supine version, just maybe padding under your left knee if you need that. One hand on either side of our foot. Finding that lunge. If you're on needing to be on your back, you can use a strap to pull your foot, pull the foot down, pull the knee down toward the ground as you stretch your left leg out. Or your hands. <laughs> Then if you would like to bring your arms up on top of the leg and come into a high flying dragon, that feels right for your body. We'll add more stretch to the front of that left leg and hip, obviously, more intense little more weight into the left leg as well, so that's not uncomfortable for your knee.
obviously dragons is a pretty strenuous pose. So coming in and out of it as needed. <laughs> you can always straighten your front leg and take a break. And we can bring our hands down and maybe come in to a more low flying dragon if you want to bring you have a block, of course you can use blocks if you like, but bringing our hands onto the ground and maybe winging that right knee out a little bit, rolling a little bit onto the side of the foot, lowering down. Then we'll bring our right hand back around to the other side of our right foot to line ourselves up here. And go ahead and straighten that right leg and just let your body relax on top of your thigh. Or if you're on your back, just straightening the leg to the ceiling. Then we'll bring that leg near us and bring the left foot forward or switch to the left leg if you're on your back and finding our lunge here. So one hand on either side of the foot, making sure the foot and leg are lined up to our hips, not with each other. <laughs> A little distance apart. And just allowing the breath to be steady and even. Sometimes stillness in a pose is more challenging, such as a pose like dragons. So in a case like that, it's nice to remember that the yin philosophy of what is the stillness that we seek? Stillness in the body like a majestic mountain of the breath like a calm mountain lake. of the mind like the deep blue sky. We can bring our arms up on top of the thigh if we feel like that's the right thing for our body. And high flying dragon. And we're never trying to master a pose, which is why it's so important to make sure we're listening to our body. Because it's not about mastering a pose. It's about what's going on inside. Okay. 
never want to force. Notice if it feels right. And if you want to come into a little flying dragon, you can leave both hands inside that foot and just let your, it's nice to let that knee sort of wing out a little bit and open that hip and kind of get a stretch in the inner thigh. Left leg. And coming back around, bringing your left hand back around on the other side of that foot. You can just straighten that leg and let your body relax over that leg or straighten to the ceiling if you're on your back. We'll come on to our back and hug our knees into our chest, relax the body for a moment. And you can stir your legs if you like and just relax hip socket, whatever feels good to you. And we'll just take a moment in happy baby. So bring your, or stirrup pose. So bring your feet up. If you like to hold on the inside of your foot, that's stirrup pose. So, or if you hold on the outside, that's happy baby. Very similar. <laughs> Same basic pose. So just pulling the knees down toward the ground. Bit. And then maybe a little rock if that feels good to you as well. Making motion on your back. We have our legs in the air here, so that is helpful in allowing the blood to come back to, towards our heart and not pool in the bottom of our body like it can when we spend our most of our lives upright <laughs> with <laughs> walking around on our feet. Change it up. <laughs> And then just take a moment to relax your body, whether that's with your legs straight or knees bent. Take a moment to breathe and integrate, allowing your breath to be nice and full and even as we feel the energy circulating through our body. 
noticing how we feel. Taking a moment to notice how you feel, how your mind is, how your breath is. Maybe compare it to how it was when an hour ago. <laughs> and I'm going to read a quote in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which is tomorrow. Quote by, by him. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. And we give thanks to our body, breath. We give thanks to Gaia, mother, and anything else we want to offer gratitude for. And I thank you all for coming. Feel free to continue to lie down and relax or get up slowly you wish.